Sean Walker here, and uh, I recently acquired this old drill press. And you see it's uh, pitted heavily and rusty all over. Now, I'm not expecting to get all this off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scraper and I'm going to scrape the surface uh, stuff off here. You can see there's a lot of it. Look at this stuff. Look how badly pitted this is. It's terrible. So I'm going to scrape it off now with the scraper. And I'm going to put it in the electrolysis tank that I'm making now over here. This is going to be the tank. It's going to be a simple video and quick. I just want you to see how heavily this rust is here that I scraped off. I mean, look at this stuff here. This is a piece of rust. Oh my God. And I spent about 10 minutes here and I uh, scraped it with a scraper here and used a wire brush. And look at the amount of rust. This is the loose surface rust that I got off this cast iron. Quite a bit of amount. I wanted to drill press for a long time in the shop here and didn't want to put the money for it. Didn't have the money. So this is where I'm at. Now I'm going to set up the uh, tank. So now what I'm going to do is find a piece of sacrificial uh, metal. I went and I got the bucket and I suspended something about above it, like that wooden piece there. And I attached it with the coat hangers to the work pieces. And then uh, I took the sacrificial, it's called the sacrificial uh, metal. And I wired those two together. See the coat hangers there? Came over here and wired it together. So these two pieces here, this piece and that piece are connected. And these two inner pieces are connected with the go hanger there. And guess what? It only took me about a half an hour to do all this. Got the water in. Now I'm going to do uh, the most important part of it. Let's put the uh, sodium carbonate in. Not, not sodium bicarbonate. That's baking soda. Or also it's the same soda that you use for your upset stomach. This is sodium carbonate. No buy. And I don't know, you know, they say it's not important how much you put in. You really can't put in too much or too less. I'm putting in a few handfuls here. Probably didn't need so much. Now I'm going to get a stick and stir it around. Stir there. It doesn't look like much. You know, you don't, I don't even see any in there now. But it's in there. And it's going to start bubbling once you get the electrolysis going. So I'm sure we got enough. And that's that for the stirring. But the important thing is, your work, the part that you're uh, de-rusting, has to be on the negative terminal of your battery charger. If you don't do that, you might ruin the part, because the part will be sacrificed instead of the sacrificial rods. And of course, the positive is hooked on over here. Now, uh, the other thing that uh, they say is important is uh, not to put any uh, copper or stainless steel inside the tank and the reason why you don't put stainless steel inside there is uh, if you put stainless steel inside there you get hexavalent chromium and that is a dangerous cancerous substance if you've seen the movie Erin Brockovich man she was hot in that movie wasn't she if you've seen the movie this is what she was going after that company for is uh, producing this cancer causing agent hexavalent chromium and that's what you can get here if you put stainless steel in the tank. So don't do that. You wouldn't want Aaron coming after you, believe me. Well, maybe you would. Well, not in a bad way. Anyhow, let's turn this sucker on. Let's see what we're drawing. Not very much. Mm, maybe not so surprising. I'm drawing about one amp. And see what we got here. Well, nothing. But uh, that's not surprising me. You know, you don't, you can't expect this to start working right away. It's going to take some while for the electrolyte solution to get uh, charged up and uh, start working. So we're not expecting anything right now. Uh, let's let it set for a while and I'll be back. Well, it's been like maybe five, ten minutes and I come back and guess what I see? So first I'm going to look at the sacrificial rod. Look at all that action happening around there. It's only been just a few minutes. And the other one over there, just a little further away, I'll zoom in on it. You're getting the same kind of action going on. That says that I got a good connection. 
Now, I see a lot of people worried about these connections. They use copper and stuff like that. And you don't want to get copper on the inside, but you could run copper on the outside, no problem. But I just use the coat hanger. So we're just going to let it sit here. And uh, the way it works is uh, when the part turns all black, she's probably done. Okay, I'm back. Good results. It looks awful messy here, uh, but uh, it's just uh, rust coming uh, from the uh, sacrificial rods. Uh, most of this rust in the scale you're seeing is from the uh, sacrificial rods, not the actual rust being removed from the part because the rust isn't actually removed from the part. It's, uh, it's converted to magnetite. She's pulling over two amps now. So that's good. I heard a bubble there. I think we're getting, yeah, okay. We're getting hydrogen bubbles along the, uh, the part that I'm de-rusting. So the part that you're de-rusting is uh, going to give off the hydrogen from the water. And uh, the sacrificial rods are going to give off oxygen. So this is oxygen. And there's ah, just a small amount of hydrogen bubbles coming off the uh, part. Okay, now we're noticing a lot more hydrogen happening around the part. That's good. You see it swirling water and it's got a ripple to it. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's these very small bubbles of hydrogen. Okay, I'm back. It's been a couple hours now. And I did add some more of the... Uh, washing soda solution not the baking soda and I added uh, two more sacrificial uh, electrodes so I got sacrificial metal in all four corners now and you can also see that the uh, amperage has come up we're going at almost four amps now so with the four rods it's drawing more amps and all is good everything's looking great so I'm gonna leave it go all night and check back in the morning Hey there, Sean here. This is the electrolysis project, the rusting uh, parchment old drill press. It's been here for two days. And in the beginning, it was uh, gassing out pretty good, going about four amps. I let it in for two days. I haven't looked at it. Yesterday, I was gone all day uh, out in the boat. And so, it's the day we take it out and take a look at it. And she's still pulling about, about an amp and a half. Sean Walker here, I'm back with the results, and it's good. Now, as you recall in the beginning of the video, I said I was not expecting the uh, pitting to come off. And of course the pitting ain't going to come off because where the pitting occurs is where this metal, in this case cast iron, is gone. I mean the cast iron is gone. It's pitted, it's gone, it's rusted off, it's no longer there. So you're not going to bring it back. If you've seen an old cast iron uh, frying pan, you know what I mean. Leave it out in the rain, it gets pitted. Well, this, this piece was left out in the rain for years. So a lot of the metal has gone, but it's still usable, still strong, and it looks a lot better now. You be the judge. Now it's all a matter of what you're expecting to get out of something. Now if you look at this piece, see all that red stuff in there? At first, I thought it was rust. And after careful, very careful examination during the scouring process with steel wool and a uh, brush, I realized that it was paint, rust-proofing paint. It somehow didn't come off in the, uh, in the process. I think somebody put rust-proofing paint in here because in this trough area is the area where the uh, lubrication for the drill goes. This is a metal drill press and... Uh, I think somebody's seen the rusty. I'll put paint in there and uh, it'll help. Well, 
least that's what I think went on. Went on. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm happy with it. And like I say, it's what are your expectations when you're doing something? If you're using steel, lacrosse is going to work a lot better. You're going to get much better uh, look out of it. But this is something that was left out in the rain, and it's iron. It's cast iron. Iron is the thing that rusts the most. So I'm happy. I got what I wanted. And a few notes on this to add on to the end. Uh, I think it's going to work better if you use flat steel instead of rods uh, for your sacrificial metal. It's just much more of a surface area and uh, I think it's going to work better for you. And I also noticed that the electrode, sacrificial rod, that was next to the uh, clamp that goes on to the charger, that one there, is it was sacrificed the most. So uh, I think something in the area of putting the uh, electrode, the positive electrode going to the sacrificial metal, have it so they all get the same amount of electricity be the ideal situation and also I don't think the car battery charger is the best way to go about it although it definitely works and that is because the car battery charger is an automatic device and when you charge a car battery as the battery gets charged it sets, sends out less electricity and that's what happened when I was doing this I noticed towards the end I was getting a lot fewer amps and a lot less action was happening so what you need is something uh, that provides a constant flow of electricity at 12 volts, I want to say 5 amps or so. I was thinking about uh, maybe a computer power supply would work. I don't really know. Hope you liked the video. See you on the flip side. And like I always say, don't forget to have fun.